I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video I'll be working through a problem that involves an RLC circuit. Uh, here's basically a kind of parallel combination of, of those elements. And what we see here in this problem is that initially I have a switch that is open, okay, so this inductor is initially disconnected. I have a voltage source here that's, of course, providing some current, some charge to the rest of the circuit. And at time t equals zero, I'm going to shut that, I'm going to close that switch, thereby connecting up this inductor, uh, probably be charging that up to some degree, and then basically evaluating uh, kind of what's going to happen uh, with the voltages and currents that we have in the, in the circuit as defined here uh, as we go through the problem. So if I, we're going to make one addition here, some current IO. So what we're going to do for the first part here is go through again all of our initial conditions. So again, before I close that switch, we assume, we're going to assume that the circuit is already at a steady state condition. And so therefore evaluate what each of these, uh, the voltage across the capacitor, the uh, inductor current, the capacitor current, and then again, because this RLC circuit, it's a second order circuit, so we need to also know the derivative of the voltage at time zero plus, and this is what we'll go through here immediately. Okay, so the first step here, looking at the voltage across this capacitor times zero plus. Well, again, we know that the voltage here across the capacitor times zero plus has to be the same as what it is at time zero minus. So those are equivalent quantities. So again, let's think about before I've done anything with that switch, I have this capacitor in parallel with this four ohm resistor uh, with another four ohm resistor here and this 24 volt supply. So I know that my capacitor at, at steady state is acting as an open circuit. So the voltage across that um, of course, we just have to be equal to the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor, uh, which we could apply uh, the method of the voltage divider in order to determine, to determine that. So the voltage divider would just tell us that uh, this quantity 4 over the sum of these two, 8 times 24 volts would give us the voltage here, and we have a quantity of 12 volts. Okay. So that would really tell us this first part that we have right here. So now looking to the second part, what is the inductor current at time zero plus? Well, with the current through an inductor, we know that at time zero plus, because we cannot have any instantaneous change in the inductor current, this again has to be equal to whatever the current is at time zero minus. Well, at time zero minus, meaning before I've closed that switch, I know that this inductor is more or less disconnected. This is a disconnected part of the circuit. So um, we know that I cannot have any current flow through that inductor before I've closed that switch. So because we know that I have no inductor current here at time zero minus, and I know that that has to be equal to the inductor current at time zero plus, uh, we know that this would just have to be uh, zero amps, no current flow. All right, now thinking about the current flow through the, my capacitor right here, um, let me just take a quick minute and erase this part up here so I can have a little more room to work and then we'll go through uh, that part of the problem. Okay, so for finding the capacitor, capacitor current at time zero plus, now we can't make any definitive statement just by saying, oh, well, it has to be equal to zero because I know a capacitor at steady state can't have any uh, current through it, and that's true. But the current in the capacitor at time zero minus, okay, we know would definitely be zero, this is not the same as the capacitor current at time zero plus. So even though we cannot have an ch instantaneous change in the voltage across the capacitor, uh, there can and there usually will be an instantaneous change in the current flow at time zero minus compared to zero plus. So in order to figure out what's going on at time zero plus, um, we would have to evaluate the circuit with that switch in the closed, posi closed position and then maybe, then we see we have a variety of elements and I can maybe apply some KCL type of rule uh, expression to figure out what the current would be through the capacitor right here. Um, to make that a little bit easier though, I'm gonna do a source transformation of this voltage source and this resistor. That would then allow me to combine these two resistors and probably make our lives a little bit easier. So if I were to do that, that would change my circuit just to look like this. Just have a resistor parallel with my capacitor, parallel with my inductor. Again, this is after I've closed that switch, so after T equals zero. So my resistance here, this resistance, 
is going to be the parallel combination of these two forearm resistors here. So I'm kind of skipping one step in that I'm going to do a source transformation, and then I'm also going to combine these two resistors uh, to the same resistance value, and so thereby giving me a resistance of uh, just two ohms. Again, four in parallel with four would give me two. You know that you just split that, divide that in half in order to get the parallel combination here. Two ohms. Again, just clarify this is four in parallel with four ohms. These two resistors in parallel. This current source then, uh, let's say this is IS. So IS we can find by relating the voltage source here and the resistor that I'm transforming. So I know that this would have to be given by 24 volts divided by this 4 ohm resistor here. So that's going to give me a current of 6 amps. So that would be this current of 6 amps. All right. So now uh, we know this is current IC, this is current I sub L. Now we can write a KCL expression that would help me to determine what this current IC is, again, at time t equals zero plus, meaning immediately after I've closed that switch. So if I write that KCL equa equation at this node here, that would look like this. So I have minus six, because the current coming in, I'm gonna count as a negative current. Um, the current then going down through my uh, resistor here is going to be 12 volts divided by the 2 ohms. So where did this 12 volts come from? Well, it came from the fact that I knew, or that I know, that the voltage across this capacitor at time 0 minus is equal to 0 plus, and we already determined that that was 12 volts. So if I, have, I, know, I know that I have 12 volts across this capacitor, and because these are now in parallel, I also know that this resistor has a voltage of 12 volts across it. So this is just Ohm's law to tell me the current that I have uh, down through this capacitor. So that's that uh, quantity there. Um, then we have added to that whatever this IC at zero plus is. And then added onto that, the final current here is uh, IL at zero plus. And again, this is applying KCL. Tell, tells me that all these have to sum to equal to zero. Okay, so a quick thing here is that I already, again, determined that my inductor current at time zero plus has to be equal to zero. And more or less just get rid of that term there. So then just rearranging here, I have minus six plus, this will just divide down to six amps, right? So then basically those are gonna cancel out. And so then I can definitively say that my capacitor current at time zero plus is going to be zero amps. Now in this case, it just it did in fact work out that this happened to be zero amps, and that is the same as the current before I closed the switch. But that will not automatically be the case. I mean, if this was a different resistor value here, then those the current from this uh, source would not uh, counterbalance the current through that resistor and such. Um, so that would not universally be true. It's just in this case with the numbers that have worked out to be the same. Sugar. Um, so now to get to the next part of the problem, looking at the derivative of the voltage at time zero plus. We take a quick minute to clean up there here, and uh, then we'll work on that part. Okay, so now we need to, if we want to know the derivative of the voltage of uh, VC, the voltage across the capacitor specifically at time zero plus, in order to figure out this, we could just apply the expression that we know relating the um, current through the capacitor, IC at zero plus is going to be equal to whatever the value of C is times dVc dt, again at time zero plus. So for this part of the problem, it's basically just asking what is this component of this expression going to be as a function of what we already found to be the current here, IC at zero plus. So because we already found that to be zero amps, um, of course, very easily we can just state that the derivative here of the voltage would also have to be zero uh, units here would be volts per second. So now let's maybe think about uh, what would be the final condition of the voltage. So let's say VC as time goes to infinity or just uh, more specifically saying uh, we've reached five time constants, five tau's, this would be the final. 
what would that look like? Well, if we see that once this switch is closed here, I do have this voltage source connected um, as sort uh, to the circuit, as it were. Um, but we see that my inductor here is in parallel with my capacitor. Well, what do we know about an inductor that is fully charged and is already in steady state? Well, that would tell us that the um, voltage across that inductor has to be equal to zero because it more or less uh, ends up acting as a short circuit. And so because this uh, inductor is acting as a short, meaning no voltage across it, and this is in parallel with my capacitor, that would thereby telling, tell me that my final voltage across my capacitor would also have to be equal to uh, zero volts. Again, after we've re already reached steady state in that part of the circuit. Um, from here now to write the more general expression, uh, which we won't get into because this was actually a, an exam problem and we wouldn't be able to fully evaluate the uh, final response um, just on, a, on an exam type of question. But we could evaluate what uh, our various frequencies are, so-called damping frequency um, and uh, omega naught, uh, radiant frequency as it were. And so for these, we could just apply the general formulas that we have for each of these, uh, one over two RC and one over the root of LC. Again, these are specific for the fact that we have a parallel combination of an RLC circuit and just plugging in what we have here. Again, for R in this case, that would be, again, the parallel combination of the two four-ohm resistors as I showed in that previous part of the problem. So that was uh, two ohms. So plugging in that for our resistance and the capacitance, this would be one over eight. Keep in mind the units here for each of these frequencies is radians per second. Uh, and then L and C, of course, those are just pulled directly from the circuit itself. That would be one over two, also radians per second. Then if we wanted to know what is the damping condition specifically for this RLC circuit, well, there what we do is compare the square of the two frequencies that we've just determined. And here we see that alpha squared is going to be less than omega naught squared, and thereby using that to tell us that this is a condition of an underdamped response. Okay. Um, then from there, using these frequencies, we could plug it into our uh, general form of the solution to find out what the actual voltage looks like as a function of time. So that's going to wrap up what I'm going to do for this problem. Hope you enjoy, and uh, look, I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.